G'day trendsetters, I'm here at Palm Cove uh, as I was in the other video um, but while I'm here I thought I might try and sell you a nuclear reactor and don't, don't uh, move away just, just yet and don't worry about liking or subscribing and don't worry about any of that rubbish if you don't like it you're not going to watch it are you, you know so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and sell you a nuclear reactor and let's just see how I go, I'm going to start off with the history of the reactor and um, the people behind this certain reactor that I'm going to try and sell you, uh, how it works, the benefits of it, and uh, where we're at now. Um, so I'll start off with a photo of Alvin Weinberg. Now, Alvin Weinberg was the guy that pretty much invented the light water reactors that they use today in uh, Japan and France and all over the USA and uh, in, in Russia and China. Um, all the very clean power that they produce from these light water reactors was basically invented by Glenn Seaborg and, and um, uh, Alvin Weinberg. Now while he was experimenting he inadvertently invented the liquid fluoride molten salt nuclear reactor and he realized it was no good for a submarine um, or an airplane might have been sorry for an airplane I asked him to get a because they got nuclear powered subs so they wanted a nuclear powered um, airplane and so he invented the liquid fluoride molten salt nuclear reactor and it doesn't so this is, this is at the Oak Ridge um, National Laboratory in Tennessee. So that they ended up building one and running it for about six years. And the, the, the beautiful thing about a, a molten salt nuclear reactor is it's, it's very uh, low pressure and high heat. So eventually Nixon, President Nixon uh, President Nixon canned the idea, he had some mates in California that were working on a different style of nuclear reactor that they could um, grab the plutonium out of it and um, use it to make bombs but the liquid fluoride molten salt nuclear reactor is very, very hard to make bombs out of. So they, they actually went, it was like a, a turning point in history. And they, as usual, especially with Nixon, that was just another crime of Nixon, the war on drugs, uh, the, you know, the, the Watergate. He was just a disaster for the, for the human race, really. So, he canned the, uh, the experiment. They had an experimental reactor going for six years and it was very, very stable. It's uh, something that's the, one of the benefits of, a of this sort of nuclear reactor is um, if something goes wrong with them, they drain into a, into a, uh, into a drain plug, uh, sorry, a plug gets go into a container. So in a normal light water reactor, there's a big containment vessel there to try and stop the, the steam explosion. With the li liquid fluoride molten salt nuclear reactor, well I'll start calling it a lifter. They call them lifters. With the lifter, you, d you can't get that explosion. Like I said, it's very high heat, 1000 degrees centigrade at least, uh, and very low pressure, so when, it, when something goes wrong it doesn't explode. Now there's uh, a guy called Kirk Sorensen, who was a, uh, was a NASA aerospace engineer, and he rediscovered uh, the liquid fluoride molten salt nuclear reactor experiment and found all the old files from when they canned the, the uh, experiment that, that ran for six years without a hitch. So he reignited the, um, the lifters and found out the story behind it and um, 
he's been instrumental and now has a, a business, uh, he has a blog uh, called Energy from Thorium and he's also the head of the uh, uh, company called Fly, um, which is the the name for the for the uh, fluoride salt that they use. Now, if you think about salt, it's when it's in its natural form, it's frozen. Your table salt is frozen. It's frozen at room temperature. But if you heat it up, uh, it goes to liquid. So that's the now that. The reactive material is thorium in this reactor rather than uranium. And I, uh, yeah, I may as well get on to how it works. So, instead of thorium, it's uranium. Now, thorium's four times more abundant than uranium. There's thorium everywhere. Every square meter, I'll try and tell you as much as I, I can remember about um, these reactors. Every Every cubic square meter of dirt on this earth has a centimeter or so of, of uh, thorium in it. The thorium's not as reactive as, as uranium. So thorium, but you can turn it into uranium. And when you do that, it, it's, it's a far more efficient reactor than a uranium reactor. So it, it burns up most of the thorium uh, uh, as it fissions. Now, to get, to get right into the chemistry, I mean, I was crap at high school at chemistry and stuff like that, wasn't interested, but the thorium fuel cycle, you start out with uranium-232 and, uh, sorry, you start out with thorium-232 and then there's some fission that's happened over here and they let it, the, the fission uh, of uranium-233 Let's out three, up to three neutrons. One of those neutrons will hit the thorium 232 and and absorb it and become thorium 233. This is just off the top of my head, guys. You know, so thorium, uh, yeah, thorium 233 then takes about 22 hours and it and it decays into protactinium 233. Protactinium-233 then takes about 27 days and it, it disintegrates, uh, uh, decays into uranium-233, which is very fissile, which then the atom splits, releases three more neutrons, neutron hits another thorium uh, atom and starts around again. So that's, that's the, fu the fuel cycle. Now when you use when you burn uranium in a reactor, you only burn about 3% of the uranium. When, so they're very inefficient. They're more, much more efficient than coal, but they're very inefficient. When you burn thorium in a, in a liquid fluoride molten salt nuclear reactor, you use almost all of it, 99.9% .9 of it. So there's no waste. They're not no waste, it's very, very little waste. And most of the waste is um, isotopes that can be used for curing cancer. There is, um, from memory, a golf ball size piece of thorium is enough to power one person for their whole life. A Western person that uses that amount of power, a normal amount of power. So one golf ball size of thorium can, can give you enough electricity, even if you drive a Tesla, for your whole, drove a Tesla for your whole life. And they, this reactor is very, very safe because it has a frozen plug in the bottom of it. So there's like a fan on a pipe that drains into the, into the draining container if something goes wrong. This little fan keeps that, that uh, fluoride salt frozen at 400 degrees or less. And if, if, the, if anything goes wrong with the reactor, it loses power and the fan stops and it melts the frozen plug and drains into the containment vessel. 
end of story. There, there's your accident, nothing. No, no isotopes going into the air, no radiation anywhere, nothing. So they're fantastic uh, for that. Some of the other properties, instead of, instead of having fuel rods, solid fuel rods, the fuel is liquid. So the thorium is, is in a liquid form in with the salt. Um, so so it's, it's, it's a far more simple reactor and you can refuel it while it's still going. And you hardly ever have to refuel them. You can, you can get a little modular one and stick it in the corner of your suburb for 30 years, just, just bury it. Because one of the other benefits of it, if it starts overreacting, it cools down. And then as it cools down, it starts underreacting and warms up. So it's it's a it, that's an inbuilt safety mechanism. So that uh, every if, if if it starts overreacting, it just cools down and slows itself down. So these guys had this one running for six years. I just walked through this creek, and and they didn't have to do anything. Like you you imagine a normal nuclear power station. People are sitting there trying to stop an explosion. A light water reactor, which I, which I referred to earlier, uh, is trying to stop a, a steam explosion. And, you know, so it's a, it's a controlled bomb, basically. And, 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 I'm, and the, 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 the latest light water reactors are fantastic. You know, they're, they're, they're pretty good as nuclear reactors go. They're very, very clean, very safe. You know, they've, they've solved the, the problems from Fukushima and that sort of thing. You know, if, if you really want to get into it, there's a hell of a lot more people being poisoned and, and killed and disadvantaged by wind and solar and coal and gas than ever with nuclear. Nuclear has been running France basically for about 80 years without a hitch. And they don't have these stupid windmills all over the countryside that are going to wear out and you know, rely on government subsidies just to just to survive. But that, that's, that's another story. So these things are incredibly safe. They produce isotopes that are, that that are, are, you can use in medical. You know, we have a Lucas Heights reactor in in Australia, and it's there not to produce power. Ridiculously, it's there to make um, uh, isotopes for for curing cancer for for medical applications. So these, these things are fantastic. The thorium is abundant. Um, they're very corrosive, you know. It's, it's molten salt, it's, it's fluoride salt. It's extremely uh, corrosive, so they have to use stuff like uh, Hastelloy N, which is a, a super duper um, alloy that, that, you know, so they have, they have corrosion problems, of course, but they're not perfect. But they're a hell of a lot more perfect than anything else that, that anyone could think of. And being so so safe, and the only reason that they're uh, expensive at the moment is the permitting. Is because the the minions in the government don't even understand them. So, getting a permit for a light water reactor takes 15 years these days. You know, getting a permit for, to build a bloody gold mine takes you 10 years if you're lucky, and and 15 billion dollars worth of bribes. You know, so. These things are these things are uh, would be very cheap uh, without all the stupid regulations, you know, like everything else in life these days. So I'll um, so Kirk Sorensen and and uh, there's also Gordon McDowell, who's been promoting um, what Kirk has to say about him. You'll find Kirk Sorensen. You you uh, put Kirk Sorensen thorium into YouTube. You'll see a million videos or Gordon McDowell. Thorium, you'll see a million videos uh, explaining how good these things are. And you might ask, you know, well, why aren't we doing them? Well, we took that branch in the road. Uh, Nixon took the branch in the road and helped his, helped his mates out in California that were building such things, the, the light water reactors. And, and it's, you know, it's like, oh, it's too hard to change. No one's interested. Well, not no one's interested. Would you believe, as usual, the, um, the Chinese have bought the technology, they've bought the, uh, the ideas and the plans and that, and, and they're building them. 
of course, you know, uh, where you want the place in the world where you're still allowed to do these things and uh, because they, they need power and they know it. So they're not as uh, crazy as our politicians, I won't call them leaders. So I love these reactors, I love the idea of, of really abundant, cheap energy that, that is walk away safe. You don't have to sit there and look at dials and graphs and stuff. You, you, you know, you can just about, yeah, you can. You can, you can get the thing going and uh, come back 30 years later and refuel it or however long it takes, depending on the size of it, uh, without stopping it and get yourself good clean base load power all the time so where where are we at well flybe energy um, has has now received a bit of funding uh, to further this this idea and it's not like they haven't already done it they built one in the 60s ran for six seven years from 65 to 71 or something like that there don't quote me on that but and, and, and it put out, you know, oodles of heat. And, and that's all you need. You just need heat. You, you, because most reactors, most power stations are steam driven. It doesn't matter whether you're burning coal or gas, you're, you're heating up steam to turn a turbine. And that's all you have to do with, with such a reactor. And they're so safe that, yeah, you can just put them anywhere and I, I'd live right next to one and enjoy the the clean air there's no carbon emissions if anyone's worried about that you know so most people probably just have never heard of a, of a liquid fluoride molten salt nuclear reactor and uh, I, I wasn't really interested in, in chemistry uh, until I, I heard about these things and and uh, it's quite fascinating, it's quite amazing when you thought you were, well, you know, didn't finish school very well or anything like that, but once you're interested in something, you know, learning that, that thorium fuel cycle it was, is fun um, because it, it can, you know, solve a lot of problems. So it's, it's the hysteria, it's the hysteria that, oh, nuclear, nuclear, it's bad, it's bad. Well. Tell that to the French, they don't have to look at windmills, you know? Tell that to the Germans who, who are uh, stupidly closing theirs down and going back to coal. They need to import more coal now because they realise that if they, they shut power stations down, they, they run out of power. So if you want cheap, ab abundant power, this thorium, is, Australia's got tonnes of it, tonnes and tonnes of it. So you, you don't even have to worry about the light water reactor having an explosion. I mean, I'd live next to a modern one these days anyway, but the, the lifter is, you know, it's not a panacea, it's not a cure-all, it's not utopia, but it's a lot closer than uh, what we've got now. So if I've sold you the reactor, hopefully I have, uh, or I've made you think about it and maybe do a bit of, bit of uh, internet browsing and see what you can find out about them. So I think that's, that's enough. Thanks for, thanks for listening guys. See you on the next one. Bye. Something I forgot to mention, these liquid fluoride molten salt nuclear reactors, they, they can uh, run on the waste from light water reactors. Now, I, I did hear a statistic once that uh, I use France as an example because it's mainly nuclear. I think it's 80, 70, 80 percent nuclear. Now, for all of the time, all of the history that they've had their nuclear reactors running that are, that are light water reactors, um, you know, uh, uranium reactors, they filled up a cubed basketball court of waste. That's it. 
for 80 years worth of waste is in, in a basketball court size cube under the ground, somewhere in France, I'm sure. Um, now that, that waste, you can feed that to a liquid fluoride molten salt nuclear reactor. So you don't even have to run it on thorium, you can run it on, on nuclear waste. And another thing, the nuclear waste that you think of as, as highly dangerous and lasts for 30,000 years and all that, now the really dangerous stuff, that only lasts a few days. The highly radioactive stuff very soon decays into something less radioactive. So your nuclear waste that you think of as, as uh, you know, death on two legs, that's actually, by the time they let it decay, um, it, it's, yes, it lasts a long time, but it's not very radioactive. I mean, you wouldn't want to eat it for breakfast, but it's not, it's not, uh, it's not as bad as people think. The, the longer the stuff lasts, the, the more, uh, uh, the, less, the less poisonous it is. So the stuff, that's, the stuff that only lasts a week or whatever is, is when it starts out, it's highly radioactive. But uh, over time, uh, it becomes very much less radioactive, and that's the stuff that lasts a long time. So, but if we can feed that into a liquid fluoride molten salt nuclear reactor, we've solved the problem of the nuclear waste from all of the reactors of the world that are, you know they've got their waste piled up in in uh, 44 gallon drums under the ground or whatever they do with it. So that's just another benefit of the of the um, lifter that it it can eat plutonium and and burn that and. and So that's it guys, thanks for watching, see you on the next one.